Hello everybody. Hope you're having a good day today. Um, and hope you're healthy and safe and uh, uh, you're getting by. We're going to talk about a lesson. The title of the lesson is Christ is Everything. And when we think about it, uh, in the Bible, there are basically two prevailing themes. And one of them is specified to us in the uh, very middle of the Bible, the middle verse of the Bible, Psalm 118, verse 8, tells us it is better to trust in God than in man. And so, yes, trusting in God is a prevailing theme. And, of course, that is uh, enforced by or enhanced by the passage in Ecclesiastes, the duty of every person is to fear God and keep his commandments. The second prevailing theme is Christ. I mean, from the very beginning, from Genesis chapter 3 all the way down to Revelation, Christ is the focus of this book. Yes, we have a lot of history, we have a lot of poetry, and we have a lot of wisdom literature, and we have the prophecies. And all of those in the Old Testament were basically looking forward to the Messiah that was going to come, the Christ. And then, of course, once we get to the Gospels and the book of Acts, it's all about Christ after that. Even into the book of Revelation, it's all about Christ. Also, when we talk about Christ, you cannot talk about Christ without his church, because Christ is the church. And then, of course, we become a part of Christ when we are baptized into Christ, and we become part of his church. And so and the church is his body, and of course, this is a place where Christ has the authority. Now, focusing on this, Jesus Christ came to do the Father's will. He said that repeatedly in the gospel accounts. And then by doing the Father's will, the Hebrew writer says by doing this, he learned obedience because of his suffering and he became the author of eternal salvation to all those who obey him. And, of course, we know that Christ came along and said, Yes, all authority has been given to me. In Matthew 28, verse 18. And then, of course, that's reinforced by the writings of the Apostle Paul there in Ephesians 1, uh, uh, 22 and 23. And so, uh, yes, Christ has been given all authority over all things to the church, and in a sense, he's been given authority over mankind. And we read that there in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, Jesus Christ is going to keep that authority. He's going to maintain the authority. He's going to control that authority until the end of time, as far as we humans know it. 2 Peter 3.10 tells us that everything is going to be burned up in this life. So, when you think about it, everything that mankind considers important just pales in comparison to the importance of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ is to have first place in everything. I mean, Colossians 1.18, um, the, the King James uses the word, he is to have the preeminence. I mean, he's supposed to be the most important thing in our lives. And he's the most important person of all of human history. And if we give him that credit. Now, a lot of people in this world, the only thing they know about Christ is it's a curse word. And so that's really sad that they don't know who Christ is and what he has done for them. And so that's why it, the burden is pushed, pushed upon us to teach these people. So that's what we, we need to do. We need to tell people about the Christ and what Christ has done. And we need to make sure we attribute to Christ what God has attributed to Christ and not some sort of a, a fake type of thing. You know, a lot of people have created God in their own image and made God into something that he is not. So we don't want that to happen. We don't want to say that about Christ either. Uh, so we don't want to tell him that he's doing, or tell others that he's doing something which Christ himself would not do. So we, he has to be the most preeminent thing in our lives. And Christ was there in creation with God. 
you know, you in the beginning, God created heavens and earth. In John 1, 1 and 2, it talks about in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And from John chapter 1, we, we surmise that, yes, Jesus Christ was instrumental in the creation. Through his word, through his will, all things hold together. In other words, how this world was set up, nature and uh, <clears throat> everything else was established by Christ. And so we have order in this world because of Jesus Christ. And John just basically affirms that not only was he with God, he was God. And so then he calls and, and goes on to say that, and the, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Yes, God with us. That's the meaning of the word Emmanuel, that he was supposed to be called God with us. And so Jesus Christ is deity. He is God, and at the same time, he was man. Now, for a lot of people, that doesn't compute because you have 100% this. You cannot be 100% something else. You have to have a, a mix, some a 50-50 or 80-20, 95-5. I mean, figure it out. But with Christ, he was God. He was in existence before the foundation of the world. And he will be here until throughout all eternity. And then, of course, he came into this earth to teach us some lessons. And we also know that because of man's sinfulness, there needed to be an atoning sacrifice. In the Old Testament, people were instructed to give the best of their flocks uh, as far as sacrifices to God. And then uh, when Christ came along, he basically made himself a sacrifice. And so in that sense, he came and died for all mankind because all mankind is under the penalty of death. Why? Because uh, death is the penalty for sin. So what Christ is, is what we call the grace of God. And so we won't have to suffer the ultimate punishment for our sins because Jesus died on the cross in our place. And so we need to realize that we owe everything to Jesus. We owe him our love and our respect. And so we also owe him our obedience to his commandments. <clears throat> he told us that. John 14, 15, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And so everything else this world has to offer, everything else is nothing compared with the knowledge of knowing Christ. See, Paul writes in Philippians 3, 7, But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. And then later on he would go on to say, Forgetting what lies beyond, be, before, uh, I press on towards that upward call in Christ. And yes, so for the sake of Christ, we have to consider ourselves as worthless. I mean, another word for that is called, we have to humble ourselves before Christ. And we can see the evidence that with Paul, Christ took first place in his life. As soon as he realized and recognized the Christ and that Christ was the Son of God and, and that Christ showed his grace to him, Paul spent the rest of his life focused on teaching people about the Christ and extolling Christ as God in the flesh, extolling Christ as deity and the one by which salvation could take place. And so in this process, you know, Paul even mentioned himself quite a few times. He says, look at my example. Paul told the Corinthians in chapter 11, verse 1, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Christ is the example. Christ is the benchmark. Christ is the standard which all Christians are supposed to follow. So we are to be like Christ. You know, in the scriptures in Peter, it says, Be ye holy, for your Father in heaven is holy. Uh, and, of course, uh, Matthew 5, around verse 47 or 48, says something along that same line. Be holy as your Father is holy. And these are quotations, I believe, from Leviticus chapter 18. And so, um, 
Paul would mention this, that he considered Christ so important that it was actually he was just a representation of Christ. You know, in Galatians 2 and verse 20, he says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. And so, yes, this is something that uh, Paul recognized about the Christ, that he was actually living for Christ now and not for himself. In Colossians 3, in the first four verses of Colossians 3, we have several things to notice. First, if anyone has been raised with Christ, now how is this raised? Well, this has reference to our baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. And so we read that in uh, Romans 6, 3 and 6. And, of course, we, we've been raised with Christ, buried with Christ in baptism. So this has reference to our baptism, and it's the representation of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Christ died, he was buried, and then he arose. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2 tells us that. So when we give ourselves to Christ, we put to death the old man. In chapter 3 of Colossians, he's going to start talking about, around verse 6 or 7, he's going to start talking about the new man. We, he first talked about the old man, which was the way of the world, and that had to be put away, and then we put on the new man, which offers the great blessings in Christ. And so we give ourselves to Christ, we put to death the old man, and we become a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. So we become a Christian. Our focus now needs to be on Jesus, and we need to keep thinking spiritual thoughts. It says in verse 2, do not set your affections on the things below, but on the things above, and where Christ is. So yes, we need to keep thinking spiritual thoughts. As long as we're thinking spiritual thoughts, our mind is focused on the joy of our salvation, that being Jesus Christ. In verse 3 of Colossians 3, we read that we have died and our life is hidden with Christ in God. Yes, before baptism, we are separated from God. Through baptism, we become united with God. And so it is hidden with Christ. Christ is our propitiation. And so Christ covers our sins. And so God, when he looks at us, does not see our sins, but he actually sees Christ. And he's pleased with Christ. And so he will be pleased with us. And that is if we are faithful to Christ and follow his will. All right, so uh, that's what we need to do. In verse 4, the, 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 the scripture says, When Christ, who is our life, is glorified, we'll be glorified with him. All right, so Christ is our life, and that's how we need to look at it. It should not be me that's doing things, but Christ working through me. And so as a Christian, we really need to focus on that. And I realize it's difficult to do. I mean, we have, we have our families, we have our jobs, we have recreation. We have a lot of things that we involve ourselves with but we must never forget our relationship with God, and we should never forget that we're trying to get to heaven where Christ is and spend eternity with him. And the only way that's going to happen is if we focus. We fix our gaze on Jesus like the Hebrew writer wrote in chapter 12 and verse 2. We fix our gaze on Jesus. We focus on Jesus, and he becomes the focus of our life. So as we live we consider Christ and live for Christ and then we also share Christ because we realize the salvation that's made possible for us we would like others to be saved also and so we share the gospel message with others and so our souls depend upon faith in Christ that will God will raise up from the dead into eternal glory now, he's already said there's an eternal life coming and everyone's going to be raised, the righteous into eternal glory, the wicked into eternal torment. So we, we learn these lessons that if we are faithful and obedient, 
we will be able to share in the glory that belongs to Christ. See, Christ is glorified now. He's sitting at the right hand of God. He's in a position of glory. But when it's all over, we're going to share the same space that he is in when we get to heaven. Realize that. Yes, he's going to be there. He's going to be the center focus forever and ever along with the, the Christ. You know, the, the depictions of the throne and all those around the throne giving glory to God and calling him worthy as the Lamb. So we're going to spend eternity in the middle of Christ sharing in what he has, sharing his existence, sharing these things, because we will be all one in Christ. So that, that's a lesson I want you to consider. Uh, if you haven't been faithful to Christ, please do so. If you haven't learned what you need to do to be faithful to Christ, you be, need to seek that information. If you have questions, send it to us. Uh, we'll, we'll be glad to discuss with you anything you might have. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, we can find somebody, probably close by, who can uh, give you some guidance and some teaching. But Christ has to be the most important thing in your life. And if you let anything get in the way of Christ, okay, you're going to have a problem. We must never forget that. Now, we can still root and cheer for the, the ball teams that we, we support, and if they win, how great. But uh, there, there's another battle that's going on, another contest that's going on, and it's a contest between good and evil. And if we want to enjoy an eternal life in heaven with God, we've got to be on the side of the good. We've got to be trying to defeat evil in all ways. So consider these lessons. Share this message with others, because uh, I'm sure others need to hear it and need to be encouraged by it. So we're, we're going to end our lesson. Uh, Y'all have a good day for now. All right, bye-bye.